And it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Uh, and we, we read this in the last days. The, the only hope of eradicating this world of the evil is going to be the return of Christ. And before Christ can return, there's some of these things that's just going to have to happen. In my opinion, I feel World War III has already started. I have no idea what's holding Putin's hand right now from, from lashing out over one night, I, I, I think, or, or maybe a combination of a few nights, over 200 drone attacks getting in near or even in Moscow and Russia. I have no idea what, what's holding this man back. And while we build our, our, our forces up in Ukraine, which is a non-NATO country, that we're treating them like they are a member of NATO, folks, we see all of this shaping up. And, and we, we even realize with with uh, the G20 meeting going on, and I, I listened to a little bit of it uh, on their first day talking about climate change, and they're using words like we desperately, we've got to change, we're going to have to do this, and just using these, these words that, 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 that is just driving their point home, how, how, how much we've got to change and to... to become more green, and, and, and all of these things that we, we see happening on top of that, do not forget the thing that's going to make all this work is this digital currency. This is why I'm going to take just a moment here to encourage you to learn to live outside the means that you've always had to live. Do we, and I've had conversations even today with folks, we, we've always had the idea that we're going to hear, and they want our Bibles or they want our guns. And I'll tell you, that's not going to be the case. We're going to hand them over to them. The majority of the people will hand these things over when they start putting a little bit of pressure on, especially when they can control the buying and selling. For the past few months, a couple months, I've, I've been uh, hitting the church, the quote-unquote church, and, and I've laid that warning out if you're still listening to folks on the internet, YouTube, whatever, and you have not vetted those folks, shame on you. Shame on you that you're listening to anyone, especially this day and time. I had someone to ask me, they just started rolling off a list of names, and, 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 and my answer was no, 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 no. If, if we're going to recommend or we're going to take time to get spiritual advice from these folks, we need to know what they're teaching. So, I'm, I'm, I mean, that's going to come up, but for the most part, that warning is over. You're going to do with it what, it, what you're going to do. But I was listening to a, a guy, and this is the reason I'm going the direction I am today. I was listening to a guy that he's kind of like me. He is really frustrated with what's going on in the, the so-called body of Christ. And we know there's, there's really only the true church, and, which is the, the body. It's, it's not all this other nonsense. But he, he's got so frustrated with it. And I was trying to think of the word that he uses, and I can't remember. But he's at the point where he thinks that the church needs to be and it's, it's not the word he's using, but uh, uh, reconstructed. And, and I got to thinking about that, and I said, absolutely not. The thing that Jesus put together 
is just as good and solid today as it was the day that he created the church. That he purchased the church. The church doesn't need a do-over. The true church is still the true church. Unfortunately, it's, it's not hardly seen because of all this other stuff that's going on. So today we're going to talk about the church, and I'm not going to go into Matthew 16, uh, other than to just make mention of it, where, where Jesus is talking to the disciples, Peter in particular, and he asks the question, and you can find this in, in the book of Matthew chapter 16, and, and, and Jesus asks the question, first of all, who do men say that I am? And in my opinion, because we see that in the Scripture, it's important who does the world or who does the, even the Christian folks, maybe if we just narrow it down to that, who do they say that Christ is? It's really important to know what people are saying about Christ. Because just as I have had people to, to speak into my life when I'm, when I'm walking air, we also can do that in the lives of other people. It's not about you're right and they're wrong or vice versa, but it's about standing for the truth of God's Word and allow the Word to stand on its own without all of this other influence. Well, they gave him the understanding uh, of, of, of what they believed the, the world, basically, the world they knew thought of Christ. Some say Jeremiah, some say Elias, some say one of the prophets. But even though these were great men, but that was not truth. Actually, we look at that and call that a half-truth, which is even more dangerous than a just straight-up lie. But then he said, okay, this is what the world thinks about me, but what do you think? Who do you say that I am? And of course, Peter made the proclamation, thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And then he answered Peter, and this is where we have got to make sure that we have a clear relationship. He said, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. This is very important to have an understanding of who Christ is and this thing called the church. This is not something that flesh and blood is going to be able to reveal to us. He said, but my Father has revealed this to you, not through flesh and blood, but he has revealed who I am. Now, we're told to go. And Church attendance is dying off in America. Folks, let me, let, let me say this. They love Jesus, but they hate His bride. There's a problem. There's a huge problem saying you love Christ, but you don't like the bride. I was reading an article this past week, and it was about the church and, and an outsider's view. And when I say outsider, I'm not talking about a non-believer, but I'm talking about a person that says they're a Christian. And they said the church is full of hypocrites. And I said, no, we're not. Look how many seats we've got. We've still got plenty of room for more hypocrites. So it's not full of hypocrites. There's still plenty of room for anybody that wants to come be part of it. But to say that we, we love Christ and yet we don't want to have anything to do with the body is a very, very dangerous place to be in our walk with God. In the Gospel of, of John... John, uh, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 17. And we're going to look at verse.
verses, uh, we're going to actually look at verses 20 through 23. And we're going, to be, we're going to be talking about the church because I realize uh, I, I've been very critical of the church. But I want to make it clear, the church is still the, this entity that, that Christ, that, that He purchased with His blood. I, I, I like it to say that everything we see when we look around, we've seen that God created, and then we look at the church, and he, it's not something He created, but something He purchased. So we're going to be looking at the church, and starting in, in, in those verses in uh, uh, chapter 17, and we're going to look at verses 20 through 23, and for whatever reason, I keep marking the wrong place. Now this is Jesus speaking in, in the Gospel of John. He says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. I, I hope you're paying attention to these words. He's, he's saying that the, by their actions that they will know that you are the one that sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved me as thou hast loved me. Now let me start out because we can see right out right out of the gate, we're talking about unity. And if you want to get Christians for whatever reason, I don't know, I guess it's because we have just become illiterate of the Word of God. Because you want to get Christians a little bit riled up Start naming names of false teachers. How dare you to talk about them? I even, I even spoke against, not, not against them getting together and having service, but calling this thing in Asbury a revival that definitely never, never on one moment met the criteria for a revival. And folks will say, well, why would, would we want to attack? And it's not so much an attack, but, but, but why would we want to attack? Let's just get along. We can believe in Christ. We can believe that He's the only way to heaven. We, we believe in Jesus. Listen, guys, remember, Jesus said, these will come in my name. We, just because they say Jesus and they have some of the terminology doesn't mean that they are of, the, or of or preaching or teaching or living the same gospel that is being written in the Word of God. Because when we talk about unity, we must understand who we are having unity with. We cannot have unity with this what, what uh, uh, Paul would have called another gospel. So just because they say Christ, because uh, I, I'll just tell you right now, if, if, if you had one-tenth of knowledge of the new apostolic reformation or the word of faith or, or the new thought movement, you would not for one moment even consider having unity with this heretic teachings. But there should be 
a divine unity or a divine community. Boy, here comes the word I've been preaching at us for quite some time, not so much here, but in this, this other part of whether the ham radio community or this Harvest Ready Fest, whatever, I've been, I've been talking this word about community. And I don't know if it's because we, we are looking for a different definition for community. I don't know, maybe we think in order to have community that, that we've got to move in with each other. You're not moving in with me, and if you did, you would move out. So, so there, there's not going to be moving in with one another, but there has to be community. God designed this for community. That's why we have ecclesia. That's the Greek word for church. That's why he called us to come and assemble. Actually, the, the, we're, we're told in the last days, don't fall into the trap of wanting to no longer come together. But we are to continue to assemble. Now, we just went one, two, this is our third week. We missed two weeks in here. Yeah, we were at the lake, and, and, and we, had a, we had a service, and that was fine. But there should never be three weeks go by without us assembling. So in other words, we got some work to do. Because if we can't come here, we're going to have to learn how to assemble it, even if it's in smaller groups. This is why I'm asking you to sign up to see what sector you would be in because it's more than just about ham radio and it's more than just about if we have a disaster that, that we, we want to be able to make sure that you're okay. This is also about if we have to go through a period of time where we can't come together as the body, the local body here, then we and we have to stay apart there must still be some assembling of God's people where God's word is spoken and he is worshiped and praised. And if you don't agree with that, then you're just disagreeing with that portion of the word of God. You say, well, I'll just, I'll just meet by myself. Well, that's not going to work. God didn't design it to be this way. That's why we have church. It's a community. Maybe we can put that divine word in front of it, a divine community. Paul wrote the letter to the church of God. It means that the church does not rise and fall over us. The church is not great because we belong to it. The church is great because who it represents and who we're worshiping. It's not because you and I are not what makes this church work. If, if it's just about you and I, then yeah, we can just, we'll build it, but we build nothing but a social club. And we're also working, and I need to start putting a little plug in because, listen, not just a few, a week or so ago, my phone was down for six days. Six days. Some of you had thought I'd left the world. I didn't realize how much I'm dependent upon, how much my ministry is tied to a phone. But everything I do, I mean, I, the, the, the thermostats, the, the, I, I mean, just so much. Not only that, just it's how we communicate here, and, and that's fine till it's not. So we're also working on an app called Band, B-A-N-D. Start becoming familiar with it because we're, gonna, we're hoping to build a private group called Church of the Harvest where that... Even if my phone is down, we can still get on this app. And if there's a need or whatever we want to use it for, this is about being a community. I know as Americans, we, we have kind of been, you, you know, trained to be. It's about me, myself, and I. Be all that you can be. I mean, uh, uh, Burger King made millions off of that slogan. 
have it your way. See, in a community, you don't get to have it your way. In God's community, you definitely don't get to have it your way. But we come together in this thing called church as a divine community so that we can learn to build one another up where the, our, our, our neighbor, and, and that could be the person living next to you, or that could be the person that's not living next to you, your neighbor and their needs become more important than yours. Oh, boy. Hmm. Think about that. I, I mean, why? Uh, listen, I'm definitely not going to toot my horn, but I am going to say this, because these last 10 days have been miserable. I've been sleeping back there on that concrete floor so that I could air this building out so we could come in here. And, and you know what? Maybe it would have done us good if we couldn't come back in here for a while. And we learn how to be the church outside of this building. And because I'm not sleeping back there no more. It's over. That's done. If the, if the fumes come back, they'll just come back, and we'll just have to pray the fumes that the Lord just don't allow it to make us sick. Now, granted, I did it for some reason. One, I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to get sick so you wouldn't get sick. Because, but when I first started this, I got sick. I got sick in here breathing these fumes in, and I realized, okay, you guys can't come in here. So, so I'm, I'm saying that not to build myself up, but, but I wanted to make sure that you were going to be safe. And I could only do this by making sure that I was going to be able to be safe in here. And for the last three or four nights, I've stayed in here without any issue at all, so I figured it was safe. Yeah, you still smell a little something, but if you fall out of your seat, we'll just say that you were slain in the Spirit. And everybody is to leave you alone because you didn't pass out over the fumes. And don't go talk to any lawyers because we'll just tell the lawyer they have to sue God. But we're talking about a, a divine community. George Barna, and this is an old, this is actually when Barna was still part of the Barna group. By the way, he's no longer part of the Barna group. Uh, I guess that's why I don't look at it as much as I used to, because I really like George Barna. I've got to meet him a few times. But and I'm sure this number is even worse now. But when this poll was taken, it's been a few years. In America, according to him, 10 million Christians have not been to church in six months. You tell me. Now, there's nothing wrong with the church. Church is as, as strong and as, as holy and as righteous as it was the, the day the Lord first instituted it. But we have become people that want nothing to do with the bride. And... I'm sure most men would say, I'm, I'm sure I could pull up any man. I, I, I mean, I pick on Jaime all the time, so let's just continue doing that. I'm sure if I brought Jaime up here and I said, Jaime, I really, I care, I, I really like you, but I just can't stand Heidi. He would probably say, well, you know, Pastor, if you have a problem with me, you, you, with my wife, then you've got a problem with me. And if you don't like my wife, then we all just leave. You, you can't say that, that you don't care for the church, but you love Christ. It, 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 that, that just makes absolutely no sense at all. But this is what's being said. 
So we, 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 we want to build this divine community, and I guess it has to be divine because only God is going to be able to make this work. Now, I didn't say that we're always going to get along, and I didn't say that we're always going to agree on everything. I absolutely, I mean, I, I can't believe we put carpet in here and we didn't lose somebody, but, but we didn't. Uh, and I guess because I didn't have anything to do with it. Because if, if I'd had anything to do with it, the carpet would have been black. I'm a black and white type of guy. So we could either have black carpet or white carpet. That had been your choice, black or white. So that I wouldn't ask my opinion on it. And we got this. And, and the guy putting it down told me it was brown. I about had a fit when he said it was brown until somebody told me this isn't brown. So I'm colorblind, so I thought, well, I can't have brown. Which, if I'm colorblind, why would brown matter? But as long as it's not pink, then I guess. Divine community, let's move on. Local community. Now, I hope that you're paying attention, because, guys, I'm, I'm not up here just, just, just spitting out words for no reason. When we leave here today, we ought to be looking at our life and asking the Lord, what, what can I do to not only engage in this community, but that I, can, that I can give into this community? And again, it has nothing to do with, with the proximity of where we live. This is talking about being... A, a, a community of believers. And now we're talking about a local community. And, and I guess the reason we, we put local on this because we're not the body. We're part of the body. You know, this, this saying that, that I'm the church. No, you're not. You're part. You can't be the church by yourself. None of us can. It takes a, a group of believers coming together that make up the body. Paul, when he wrote to the church of God in Corinth, and, and the primary way that the word church is used in the New Testament, it always refers to a local gathering of believers. And I know this is not new to you, but it seems like this concept of church is dying in America, and I don't understand why. I don't understand why we still call ourselves a Christian, but yet we don't want to come to the house of God. None of this makes sense to me. And, and, and I, have to, I have to figure out a way to make things make sense. God created the church. He gave the church an address. He created the church something that we can see, something that we can touch, something that we can experience. It's not an indivis invisible entity. It's very visible. It's tangible. You can touch it. People think that they're, well, I'm, I'm the church. You're talking about something invisible. Now, let's talk about commitment. It's really easy to be committed to something invisible. You might as well say amen. Because by, just by your being here means that you're not falling into that trap. Or I hope you're not thinking of falling into that trap. It's very visible. It's tangible. It has form. It's not formless. You can see it with your eye. You can, you, you, it has a physical form to it. It's not this building, but it's the people that come and we just choose this address, 5212 South York Highway, where we come together and become the local church of this community. A place where we come together and, and we worship. And, and, and uh, let, let me go sideways just for a moment. Very few people, if any, I, I don't know how it was in the, you, you know, in the 30s. We, we know the, the, the Great Depression, 
But, but outside of anyone that would have been old enough to even remember that, which is probably not anyone here, none of us have any idea what it's like to live where we have to be on constant awareness or, or working for our food. We, you, you, you know, buying clothes for our kids for school, most of that would have been handed down. In other words, we've always had it fairly easy. So it's going to be hard for any of us to imagine a life without electricity, even for 30 days. Or today, even the internet. Man, we can't even get away from a stupid cell phone. I hate these cell phones, but, but yet I, I go out and spend major dollars. Thank God they were having a, 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 a rebate on the phone that I bought. It's unreal what these things cost. I mean, this, this phone that I've got, a $1,000 rebate. A $1,000 rebate. Can you imagine that? That's a $1,000 rebate. So that means that phone was $1,800. Who in their right mind would pay $1,800 for a phone? Not <laughs> me. <laughs> Thank God for the rebates. Folks, can you imagine someone in Haiti? They, it wouldn't even cross their mind to pay $2,000 for a phone. When I was there, and you see them making mud packs and eating that so they have a, a feeling of fullness in their belly. So we, we don't know. We, we can't imagine what it could be like, even if it's just temporary. And, and that time that I had the, that uh, state representative come, he asked this church that you need to prepare and put things back for a minimum of six months. I can't imagine what he is, is, was hearing to, to come and tell a church, you need to have medicine, food, water, all these basic essentials. You need to have six months supply of this stuff. We think we'll make it. We'll be fine. We'll do okay. Folks, I'm here to tell you, we go digital currency and they decide that that you can't buy any more gas or, or you can't buy this or you can't buy that and you've not been preparing for this day mentally, physically, and spiritually, you will sign over on the dotted line. And here's the thing. I am, I am totally convinced. Now, this, is, this isn't a speculation, but I like the way that uh, 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 Walden, I believe, puts it. It's informed speculation that this digital currency is the gateway to the mark of the beast. And we're going to just sign right into that. You might say, well, it's not the mark now. I don't care. It doesn't matter. What would cause us to just give in? Why are we not working diligently for a parallel system? See, I'm not of the opinion just because the Bible says this, that it's going to happen to every person. It's going to happen, but you can see resistance even in the Word of God of people that's resisting this Antichrist. Why are we not working on something that will work in parallel opposite of that? And it's not going to work if we first don't learn community. We're going to have to learn to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and it's going to have to look a lot different than it does today. Because today we have been taught that, that, that we're, we're, we're all on an island by ourselves. And you might say, well, Pastor, it's just hard to get along. We're talking about a local community. It's hard to get along with people. 
But it's hard to get along by yourself. I, I like the guy that was stranded for about six years out on the island. I think I've told this before. Lo and behold, here comes his rescue. They come, and he was giving them a tour of the island. Been there six years, ten years, whatever was there. And they seen the house he lived in. Then they seen two buildings. He said, what's those buildings? He said, well, that's where I attend church. Well, what's the other building? He said, that's where I used to attend. So we can't even get along by ourselves. So why, why would that even discourage us? We're, we're going to have to learn to come together as a community. I know sometimes uh, we, we, don't, we, we may not like each other, but, but folks, unless the Lord gets us out of here, I'm not even talking about the timing of the rapture. Unless he gets us out of here fairly quick or he puts the brakes on what's going on, we are headed full-blown into this, and not, we're not talking years. We, some people are even putting this down into weeks. Some folks are saying we will be in the digital currency before this year is up. I, I think it was, well, I'm not going to say who it was, that in Chattanooga, already a store there, if you want to scan your palm with your credit card, then you never need your credit card again. When you come in, they just scan your palm, and everything you get will just be taken out of your account. See, Amazon's had these stores for quite some time. It wasn't scanning your palm, but you go in, and it was the facial expression or the, the, the taking your, your, your imprint of your face and, and then they would just take it out of your Amazon account as you went in and shopped. Didn't even have to check out. Just get it and go. And everything was, was taken from, from you. Oh, we can most of our food. Actually, Dorothy gets really excited about cooking me a meal that's from everything we grew, whether, whether we raised the cow and slaughtered it or we grew it from the ground. So the other day I stopped and got me a can of chicken noodle soup. Have you heard the latest on the chicken noodle soup? Read the ingredients now. It says these products are produced in a lab. Guys, they don't even want us eating real meat. This is why this alpha-gal, I'm not saying it's not real. Over 400,000 people in America are now unable to eat meat. Some say they're even putting it in your food to give you this allergy. We are going to have to come together. Only a community is going to be able to offer a different lifestyle. And if the Lord takes us out of here before, then thank God. I mean, listen, if I work my fingers to the bone preparing for what is coming down the pike, thank God if he takes me out of here before I get a chance to use it. I hope I never get have to use this stuff. But it seems to me, it seems apparent that these things are right upon us and we just can't continue to wait until it happens. If we wait until it happens, we're, it's already too late. And I am very fearful. I do not know. I, I, I mean, because this starts messing with, with so many people's theology. I, I mean... Especially if you believe once saved, always saved, then what happens if you take the mark of the beast? See, we, we, we don't even want to test that out. But folks, I'm telling you, we will give in to this if we're not very careful. We have to be careful. And, and, and we, 
And instead of trying to battle this alone, let's, let's come together as a community and offer, offer an alternative. But if that's not reason enough for anything, when it comes to the church, you remember when Peter denied Christ and then Christ went on to the cross and He resurrected and then they, they seen Him on the shoreline and Peter went to meet Christ and, and then we see this dialogue between Peter and Christ. And, and the Lord looked Peter's Square in the eye, and he said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Yes, Lord, I love you. And he said, Prove it. Feed my sheep. Say you love Christ then we start putting together things in our life that looks like something the Bible would have us to do. I'm, I'm telling you, I don't care how you look at it. When, when you're talking church, you're talking community. It's easy to say, I love you. But I like what the one author said, but Christ is looking for someone that says, I love you with skin attached to it. And He wants to take what faith that we have, whatever, wherever you are, what small amount, great amount, whatever, and He wants to take that faith level to the next level. And many times he'll do this by taking and dropping us right in the middle of a mess where we need him and we need each other. So, yep, it's a divine institution. It's a local, but it's also unique. And I'm I'm getting ready to quit. It's after 12. I've, I'm going I'm to cut this off a little quick. It's a unique because the uniqueness is, remember what, what Christ, He says, take up your cross and follow me. It, it's unique because He uses words that, that we would never, I mean, if, if we were trying to sell it, we, we would never use words like cross and crucified. I mean, he said, I've been crucified with Christ. No longer I live, but Christ lives in me. So he's saying that we, we have to be, we have to crucify this old man. It's unique in this manner. He's called us to be different from the world while we're living in the world. And it doesn't matter how many times we're failing. Listen, guys, don't walk out of here and misunderstand anything. It doesn't matter how many times we're failed because God sees the finished product. He sees the work in progress of all of us. So, yeah, we don't have it figured out, but we're not doing anyone, ourselves or anyone else, any good by just continuing to talk about these problems. YouTube is full. Facebook is full of people talking about the problem. No one is offering a solution that I've listened to, a solution that I can get behind. It's going to have to be Christ-centered or I don't want anything to do with it. And because it, it has to be Christ-centered, that means that, that I have to put myself way in the back and everything else has to go ahead. He sees this work. 
I, I'm going to tell you, I was thinking about my marriage. If, if, if I was the same person I was when Dorothy and I first got married almost 44 years ago, we'd be divorced today because I was a total jerk. I was jealous out crazy. I mean, I was crazy stupid. No, it's a work in progress. And because it is, and, and, and because we are hid in Christ, and a lot of these things are they're, they're, they're hard to comprehend, let alone explain. But, but because we're hid in Christ, Paul tells us that, that each one of us are called to be holy. It's unique. In, in my opinion, just this harvest fest that we're going to do for a, in a church. Maybe not always, but today that's unique in a church. My goodness, we, we even had, uh, 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 Steve, not, you just have to take this lightly. We even had some basic safety meetings on handling a weapon. And you wouldn't have been happy with it, but I would. I was very happy with it. That's very unique in a church. It's, it's, yeah, our focus is to come and praise and worship God, but folks, there's more to it than just the spiritual aspects. We have to learn how to, to live out the entirety, the whole counsel of God's Word. And God's Word, yes, covers mainly our spiritual, our, our spiritual life, but it also covers our civil life, our married life. And we need to recognize that. It might be even to the point that the Lord would allow us, we get to the point where we don't even recognize ourselves that He's changed us so dramatically. I, I was reading about a change of this person. His name was Russell Kristoff. Anybody ever heard of him? Probably not. He was the face for 15 years on Folgers Coffee. He was paid $250 for that picture. And they told him if they ever used it, they'd pay him $2,500. They used it for 15 years, and he never even knew his face was on Folgers Coffee Can. One day walking down an aisle in the grocery store, he's seen that can and seen himself. He did what any red-blooded American would do. He sued Folgers. They awarded him, I believe it was something like $15.6 million. Now, that may be hard to make, but can you imagine... What, what the, how the Lord could change us to the point that we don't even recognize ourselves to be something that can be used for Him. I, I mean, can you imagine really a real community of believers only, only something that, that God can do? And then, then I have to end it with this for sure because it's been about unique, been about local, but the body of Christ, never forget, is universal. It's not just us at Church of the Harvest. There are, there are many other believers out here that are on the right path. There are many believers that are, that are trying their best to be on the right path, and they're being influenced by all these on the internet, YouTube, and so on and so forth. Someone has to stand in opposition. It's just like if you send your, your kids to public school, there's some things in the public school system. Now, whether they teach it up here or not, I don't know. But there's some things that's taught in the public schools that parents ought to be countering 
when they get their kids home to let them know it's not that way. We have to do the same thing. We owe this. We owe this to fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that it's not this way. This, this stuff that you're hearing, it's not this way. This is, this is part of being a community that we care enough for one another we, and, and universally thinking we care enough for the body that we're willing to stand up even in face of ridicule just so that someone might not fall into the trap of all these false doctrines. Because here's the deal. The warnings have went out about the false doctrines. If you continue to listen to people without vetting them, then the, the delusion is you're going to stay in the delusion and you'll continue to follow false teachers. You'll not find the truth if you don't take ownership and start doing some, th doing some things on your own. And today, stop listening if they're on the internet, stop listening to them until you've vetted these folks. Now I went a long way around. Not, not really a message about the church, but about a church being a community. I may be demented in my thinking, but I feel like Harvest Ready Fest is part of it, or I wouldn't fool with it. I feel like communications is part of it or I wouldn't be part of it. I feel all this is important as a body of believers because the purpose behind this is to help someone else. Someone that doesn't know how to can food. Someone that doesn't that, that, that has no idea what they would do if, if some type of disaster happened. Someone that, that we are offering to try to help. The problem is you can't even get folks to participate until the day it happens, and then it's too late. There's not a plan. There's not a plan to take care of anyone that's not part of this. This is part about being a community of believers. This has biblical principles behind it. Loving our brothers, loving our sisters, putting others before ourselves. You might do that, but we can all do more. May it become a muscle memory automatically to think of others before ourselves. I understand the culture we've grown up in, but somebody has to debunk this American dream because it's not biblical. American dream is not biblical. Let's bow our heads. Father,